Hey guys, this is Drew with the Travel Nurses Guide. Uh, today we're doing a Facebook Live on how to get started as a travel nurse. Uh, I think back four, uh, four years ago now, a little over four years ago when I started my first travel contract, I had so many questions. I had so many fears. I had no clue if I was making a huge mistake. Uh, putting in my two weeks notice was absolutely terrifying. I did not know if, like I said, if it was going to be a mistake, if I was going to be able to even find a contract because I actually put in my two weeks notice before I started uh, or before I even found a travel contract. It actually took me uh, about five weeks to find a travel contract and that was five weeks, four to five weeks after I put in my two weeks notice. I was not being very flexible. I wanted to only go to one city. And I also just had no clue what I was doing. No, did not know the best way to find a contract in that city. So I actually sat at home for about four weeks looking for my first contract. Uh, and four weeks is a long time to sit at home without a job. So I uh, finally found a contract. I was a little bit desperate for the contract. So. I accepted what the recruiter offered me, which was uh, one of the big mistakes I made with my first contract. Uh, some of the fears I had before I started my first contract, which I think um, fears are very normal. Um, some of the ones I had was the finding a contract, like I just mentioned. Um, I had a lot of second guessing. Um, was I, you know, what was my plan after this? How long was this gonna work out? Was I prepared for it? Did I have enough experience? Um, next up, I was really, uh, I would say one of my biggest fears is probably taxes. I had heard about these tax-free stipends, but I had never heard of them really. No one I knew got paid in tax-free stipends. I just knew the IRS was gonna come after me at some point and just take it all back. Um, so I, uh, that was a huge fear of mine. Even my parents were asking me, do you know what this is? Or do you understand this? And I was like, e yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. It sounds great. Doesn't it? Um, so I, uh, well, I've got some videos in this group as well that will kind of help explain the tax free stipends. But if you are concerned about that, um, it's definitely a normal thing. Um, check out some of the videos in this group. Uh, next up, uh, one of the big struggles I had was housing. I was originally living in a low cost of living area. I was paying, uh, I was living in a two bedroom apartment and my part of rent was like $400 plus uh, the utilities or maybe it was the cable or something like that. Um, I was spending well under $500 a month for rent and utilities, which was absolutely amazing. So when I'm, my first travel contract was in Nashville, Tennessee, where housing isn't really considered cheap. And uh, the closest, you know, the most affordable thing I could find was a shared, uh, an apartment for $800 a month. So that was definitely uh, a concern of mine. I um, have just kind of learned to accept that housing is expensive in a lot of areas including uh, or especially when you are doing short-term leases such as three-month leases and when you prefer it to be furnished with utilities included all that stuff typically makes the price of rent go up and one of my last fears was getting taken advantage of by recruiters i honestly wouldn't hardly even knew if i was getting taken advantage of i've made a post in the past about where a recruiter from an agency that I talked to for about a month straight looking for my first contract offered me a contract in Nashville, Tennessee for $1,100 a month gross. And that's absolutely terrible. But in my mind, I thought, you know, that's almost twice as much as I was making as a staff nurse. That's got to be great. You know, hey, it can't be, you know, I'm making twice as much. I'll make it work. Um, luckily, I didn't accept that contract and I found another one paying a little bit more. Um, not much more, definitely should have still made more money on my first contract. So I uh, just kind of wanted to share this so that for your first contract, if you're 
uh, really scared, second guessing yourself, that uh, fears are normal. Um, I've got a lot of information in this group and I'm gonna go over some today that are gonna help you deal with those fears, help you um, kind of maybe avoid some of the issues or just to realize that the fears, uh, you can't control some of them, you can control some and I'm gonna help you with that. Um, so the other day I, I made a post and I um, asked a lot of members, what are some struggles you have starting out as a travel nurse? Got a lot of good answers. Um, it even brought back some memories as far as um, some of my fears and issues I had. Um, to start with, I won't, um, if you will, if you're looking to get started travel nursing, put a comment in the comment section. Let me know you're looking to get started travel nursing and when you're looking to get started travel nursing. Um, some of the first fears, uh, or some of the first comments I got was uh, getting used to a new environment on your contract. Um, this is pretty normal. Um, you just have to be flexible. There's a lot to learn when you first get started travel nursing, especially going to a new facility. Uh, you're talking about learning, um, you know, where everything is. A possible new policies, new procedures, uh, new names of coworkers, new charting system, you know, new IVs. There's lots that you just have to be flexible, be open-minded, give it a shot, uh, do the best you can, and keep moving on. Um, again, the second, uh, second fear I have is not stressing over the small things. This kind of feeds off the last one. Um, and it basically, um, uh, you know, don't stress the small things. You can control some things, you cannot control some of the others. Um, do the best you can, stay open-minded, ask tons of questions, um, be as prepared as possible. Um, understand not everything is gonna go perfectly, um, but just don't stress all the small things. Uh, also, one other thing, as far as you know, stressing, just realize your contract is kind of the commandments of the, of the contract. It lists all the requirements. You are truly only required to fulfill uh, the requirements of your contract. If, if, they, if the hospital or facility starts asking you to do more than your contract asks you, you're not obligated to do that. Um, yeah, maybe the hospital might not uh, uh, look at you and smile quite as much. Maybe, maybe not. It's never really been an issue for me. Uh, but just know that you're only really obligated to fulfill the um, requirements mentioned in the contract. Uh, third thing is confidence. Uh, confidence, uh, I think we all start out um, with our first contract where, I know I was a little, I don't know if I'd say timid is the right word, but I definitely was kind of laying low. I was trying to help as much as possible because um, I didn't know where I fit in, where my experience level was. Uh, so I didn't want to come off as cocky. I didn't want to come off as the guy who didn't know what he was doing. I really just kind of tried to bust my butt and do the best I could. So again, you know, with your confidence, I think it is kind of related to your experience level. And the more experience you have, probably or hopefully the more confident you are, um, just be careful, you don't want to come in and be the, the new travel nurse who's cocky, who thinks he can do everything better than everybody else. Uh, fourth is housing. Finding safe and affordable housing. Again, I mentioned this earlier, this was a, a little bit of an issue for me. Um, I've kind of learned that there's lots of resources to find housing. Um, sometimes I can find affordable housing. Sometimes housing's not been very affordable at all and I just have to pay it. Um, but I try to exhaust all resources before I start paying for expensive housing. The last Facebook Live was on housing. I mentioned several resources with that. So check it out. I think you can find it under the event, events tab in this group. Just go to the top, click events, and uh, you will see the housing Facebook Live. But don't do that yet. Do that after this Facebook Live. Uh, how many agencies should I sign up with? That's a good question. 
Uh, I originally, when I first started, I signed up with a whole bunch of them because I, uh, I listened to them. I, I signed up for all the agencies that I talked to. They would say, hey, I can't talk to you until you sign up or fill out this application. So I did. I bugged a lot of my coworkers to do references. Um, however, it still took me a month and a half to find a travel contract. So now I recommend two, maybe three, four at the max agencies to sign up with. I typically tell people pick two of the larger MSP agencies. That's going to be IA, TNAA, uh, American Mobile, Cross Country, Health Trust. Some of the larger agencies, they're going to have more options and possibly be the MSP for those contracts, meaning they'll likely be able to offer you more money. Then you can pick you know, two smaller agencies, maybe ones that are uh, more local to the areas you like to travel. Like I've got a couple agencies that are more local to the state of Georgia uh, who I contact anytime I want to travel back to Georgia or I'm helping someone find a contract in the state of Georgia. So two to four agencies is probably the max I would sign up for. However, I talk to all the agencies. I've probably talked to 25 plus agencies over the past four years. And some will try and say, hey Drew, you need to fill out this application before I can talk to you. And I simply just tell them, hey guys, I'm not interested in filling out your application. I wanna to talk to you about this specific contract. Um, if you're not willing to talk to me about it, I'm just gonna move on to the next agency. And agencies don't like to see nurses walk away because that's how they make money is by keeping you and making you or getting you to sign a contract. So I like to leverage, you know, my uh, willingness to work with them to make them work with me. So that's how I'm able to work with a lot of agencies is I just, you know, I'm willing to walk away from them. Um, Next question is what to pack. I still haven't mastered this, uh, especially since I now have a wife who travels with me. Um, we typically always overpack. Um, if we can fit everything into both of our vehicles, then I think we're doing pretty good. Um, we did, a couple contracts ago, we did have to rent a 20-foot U-Haul to get everything home. So that was definitely not the way to do it. So for the most part, pack light, pack uh, your necessities, what makes you comfortable. Um, my wife always brings an air fryer. So, you know, air fryers are life. So uh, pack light, that's my advice. You can all- if you were in a full place and furnish it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we rented our U-Haul, we actually didn't, our apartment that we rented was actually not furnished. So we did have to bring an entire bedroom suit, a couch, uh, and we purchased a dining room table and a second couch while we were there. So there was a little bit of a reason we needed a U-Haul, but I, I advise you to typically to rent uh, a, um, a furnished place with utilities included. Uh, in a safe place. If you can do that, then you're doing pretty good. You'll definitely make your life a lot easier. How will new coworkers treat you? Um, I've never really had this issue, but I also think it's because I'm a male. Um, I think a lot of times, uh, I think sometimes females can be a little catty. So I don't want to, you know, say the wrong thing here, but I definitely think that nurses can uh, be a little cutthroat at times. I think being a male, sometimes I'm more out of it, so, or just don't pay attention to it. Sometimes I, I just don't even pay attention. I don't even notice when someone's being rude to me. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I go in, I clock in, I do my work, and I leave. So I've definitely had some times where some people have like really ruffled my feathers, but I try not to show it and I try not to let it bother me. So I don't have much advice. Just to just remember it is short term. You're only there for a certain number of weeks. You can likely see the light at the end of the tunnel. If you don't enjoy it there, you can always just move on after this contract is over. Uh, how to handle a new charting system. Charting systems, um, that's definitely tough. I have, I think I've used four different charting systems. Some are better than others. Um, it's definitely a little bit of a stressor for me because I'm not the best with technology. Um, 
So some facilities will give you a, a one day orientation to the charting system. Um, some don't, some kind of do that while you're getting your one day orientation to the floor or to the department that you're working in. So just again, be open-minded, try not to let it stress you too much to where you just get a brain freeze and you just can't think through it. Um, ask tons of questions. How do I do this? How do I do that? When it comes to charting, if you're ever in a spot where you don't know where to chart it, just put it in a narrative note. Put it in a narrative note, it goes in the chart somewhere, and it's documented. Uh, also, I like to tell people, when you're in a critical situation, you don't know where to chart, your patient's maybe going downhill, something's not looking good, patient is your first priority. You can always come back and chart. Yes, hospitals will tell you how important charting is, and you know that's you know ultimately they just want it to be charted to cover their butts and to make sure they get paid for everything you do. Um, but the patient's number one. Your first goal is to keep your patient alive. You can always go back and back chart. So um, I think that's that's kind of how I, I always make sure my patient is taken care of. Then I can go back and back chart. I can put in a narrative note. I can ask the charge nurse. I can ask a coworker how do I chart this. Um, I've also been known to write down everything on a paper tile. So again, you can just go back and back chart it. Um, Finding supplies, you know, that's that's a tough one. When you first get started, you don't even know uh, where the supply room is, and then where are, um, I'm trying to think, this happens to me all the time. I've been at this one contract for two months now, and I'm still asking, where is, where is the um, insulin syringes, or, or where are the, uh, the lancets uh, in the supply room? Because I, it's just things that you, don't typically go to the supply room and look for or have to find. So just ask questions. Let's see here. I'm gonna. So I've got lots more questions here. I'm gonna uh, hit some of the big ones that I think are really crucial. Um, which recruiter to use? Um, you know, typically, I, the recruiter doesn't matter to me. For the most part, I just want uh, the recruiter to offer me a good contract. Make sure there's no red flags in the contract. Make sure that the recruiter is not just awful. Of course, I don't wanna work with one that is awful. Um, but as long as the recruiter is, is fairly um, uh, like resp responsive and offers me a good contract, I don't contact the recruiter very much during the contract. You know, once I get started, uh, for the most part, I kind of know how this works. When it gets closer to time, I'll ask them, you know, what's the deal with the extension or, you know, what's available next? So I understand if it's your first contract, you probably want to uh, talk to your recruiter a little more throughout the contract. You might have questions, you might have some issues, and that's completely okay. Talk to your recruiter, uh, let them uh, answer all your questions. They are there for you, they are a resource, uh, especially during the contract. So, um, as far as which recruiter to use, that's up to you. I put more um, priority on what the recruiter offers me versus how the recruiter treats me. But that's just me personally. Understanding the negotiations of a contract. Um, I could talk to you probably for two or three hours on this. Um, I'm actually working on something that I think will benefit uh, anybody who is looking to get started travel nursing or is looking for help on uh, negotiating travel contracts. So stick around, um, maybe put a comment in the comment section, let me know if you'd be interested in something like that. I definitely think it will help you out if you have lots of questions for finding contracts and negotiating. Um, contract cancellations. That's that's a pretty common one nowadays as far as um, 
with everything with COVID, numbers are going down, censuses are low, contracts are getting canceled, and rates are dropping. Um, it hasn't happened to me recently. Um, I definitely see it happening a lot as far as rates dropping. And I think rates are dropping for most people. I think some agencies are possibly telling nurses, oh, rates are dropping and their rate actually didn't drop. So it's kind of tough to determine which one it is in that situation. If it only drops $10 an hour. Uh, Kayla, she's in the background here listening. She says, if your rate only drops $10 an hour, like if you're getting paid $80 an hour and all of a sudden your recruiter says, hey, your rate's dropping, it's going to 70. Um, I don't think that is necessarily your bill rate dropping or the hospital lowering the rates. I think that is just your agency trying to make you think that and taking an extra $10. Um, I really think that a lot of these rates are probably gonna be cut by 30, 40, and 50%. Uh, when the hospitals cut them. That's what I've kind of been seeing. So definitely be on the lookout of that. I think that uh, some agencies are, are definitely, nurses are realizing rates are dropping, mine might drop. So agencies are saying, you know what, they're not all dropping, but hey, I'm gonna tell my nurse that uh, their rates dropping and see if they believe it because it's been happening to some people. So um, I don't have proof of that, but I definitely can see some agencies doing that. So just be on the lookout of that. Don't necessarily just accept a rate drop. Uh, let's see here. So health insurance and benefits, this is a big one. Luckily for me, when I started travel nursing, I uh, was still on my parents' insurance, so that was not a huge issue for me. I was, I think, on my third or fourth contract before I had to figure out another option. I did use agency-provided insurance for a while. Um, however, I, I kind of found out that the agency isn't 100% open and honest uh, with their health insurance. They'll make it look like you're only paying say $50 a week for health insurance that has a premium of $600 a month. Well, do the math, you know, four to 4.3 weeks a month at $50 a week, that's you know, a little over $200. Well, your premium is $600. Well, I promise you, your agency is not paying that $400 for your premium. What they're doing is they are taking an extra $400 a month from your bill rate and basically they're lowering your hourly rate, taking that extra money and paying the majority of your premium. Um, so when an agency offers you free health insurance, I promise you it is not free. When it's $1 a week, it's not $1. If you uh, want to know, ask your recruiter, what is the monthly premium for my health insurance coverage? They should send you an email with the uh, monthly premiums for your health insurance from that company. This happened to me with Health Trust. I can't remember what the weekly cost was that they were gonna take from my paycheck, but I thought I was gonna get private insurance. I kinda waited to the last minute. I started worrying, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna get agency insurance anyway. And I thought they could just add it and you know take that $50 a month or whatever it was from my paycheck and my recruiter said no we can't do that we've already calculated your pay package uh, to not include health insurance but here are the monthly premiums that that you can pay if you want for the health insurance and it was six it was I think it was six hundred and sixty dollars a month and they were only going to take like fifty dollars a week um, out of my paycheck, but what it was is they offered me a higher pay package because they weren't having to pay um, that extra 400 or 450 dollars a month for my health uh, insurance premium. So that's why I suggest using insurance other than the agency insurance. Uh, not only because you can uh, negotiate a higher pay package, but you also don't have gaps in coverage between contracts. Uh, usually COBRA will cover you for I think another month or something like that. So there's never any rush between uh, finding uh, your next contract or not. Um, and then also, 
there's no rush and there's no, oh, no uh, your deductible does not start over uh, if you swap agency. So having that agency insurance kind of holds you to the same agency. It incentivizes you to stay there because if you change agencies, you're going to change health insurance, which means your deductible starts over and you possibly have uh, gaps in coverage. So um, see if you can get on your spouse's coverage, your parents' coverage, um, or find private insurance. Um, however, understand that's not an option for everybody. And if you have to have agency provided insurance, then um, you, it's just something that you have to do. And um, it, 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 it's not a deal breaker. You can definitely still make it work. And it's just, uh, for me, I found out if you can avoid that, it's, it's usually more beneficial. Uh, loneliness and being homesick. This is actually something I, I struggled with um, in my second contract. I moved to a city where I didn't know anybody. I had just started dating Kayla, my now wife, and I, um, I really struggled. I had never really kind of been in a, in an, at a, for a, I guess by myself for such a long period of time. I learned a lot about myself during this time. Um, I learned I probably would never put myself in that situation again. Um, I don't have much advice because like I said, I really struggled with it and um, I just now avoid it. My uh, Kayla started traveling with me the next contract. Um, so I've always had her uh, through, I guess for all the other contracts I have worked with. So definitely loneliness and homesick is definitely a thing. Um, I know there's lots of apps now you can get out and do things. Maybe with COVID, it was probably a lot tougher. Um, but yeah, I guess just get out, do, you know, find something to do. Be safe though. Don't put yourself in a dangerous situation. Uh, let's see here. Uh, here's a good one. What to expect in a phone interview. Phone interviews, um, a lot of people, I was really nervous about my first phone interview because I, I kind of thought about it as a normal interview like a job interview which is usually where you're you know the interviewer asks you lots of questions you know they ask you your plan you know what's your weaknesses and they ask you all these interview style questions however most of the time with phone interviews usually all it is is the manager calling you and saying hey this is the situation this is what it looks like this is how we do things and I want you to come help us Will you be willing to do that? And that's pretty much how it goes. You know, it can last five, 10, 15 minutes. They give you an opportunity to ask them questions. I would say more you are interviewing them versus them interviewing you. So I have posted um, a document. It's actually been posted in the announcement section of this group uh, for a while now, but check it out in the announcement section at the top of this group. There's a document called five steps to lock down your perfect contract. And step number three, I believe, uh, talks about the phone interview. And I have about 15 questions listed for you to ask the interviewer during a phone interview. And these questions, um, they include Let's see here. I'm just going to go over a few of them because you can look this up. Definitely need you to read the whole thing. There's lots of good information in this document. Uh, let's see here. It's step number four. And just some things that I ask is the orientation process. How long is orientation? Uh, how many shifts of orientation do I get? What charting system do you use? What are the nurse to patient ratios? Are there techs uh, and other staff to help? Um, Will I be floated? Uh, is overtime uh, available? Will I be called off? So lots of good questions there. Definitely check out that document. There is lots to, um, to learn from it. So I'm gonna see if I can find the live to see what questions y'all have. Let's see if I can find it. If you, if you have any questions that I haven't answered yet, um, put them in the comment section. Let's see if I can get to them real quick. Um, uh, 
thanks so much for having this Facebook page. Uh, thank you, Sally. Um, I definitely enjoy helping people. I, I think um, travel nursing has a lot of potential to change people's lives. It has certainly changed mine. So I want to do the same for as many other people as I possibly can. Uh, hello, do you maintain a 403B retirement plan and medical insurance, especially if you change recruiters with new agency? Um, yes, I touched on benefits. I did forget to mention retirement. Um, so maintaining a 403B, uh, that is an employee sponsored retirement plan, same with a 401K. So you can only have it through an employer which you have to be working for that employer. You can keep your 403Bs and 401Ks with the employer, like your staff hospital, uh, but if you're not working there, you can't really contribute to them. So we definitely wanna continue contributing. So you have a couple options. You can open up a retirement plan with your agency, um, which is never a bad idea. Um, however, the, usually you're not vested with that agency. You know, they might match you 3% or 4%, and that sounds great, but a lot of times you have to work with that agency at least a year with no gaps between contracts um, to be completely vested. So typically I just kind of disregard the match and realize, hey, this is an opportunity for me to contribute and me solely to contribute to uh, my retirement plan. So that is an option. Um, Let's see here. Also, just know that using your agency's 403B, like I like to swap agencies. I like to try and make as much money as possible. And it's very hard to do that by sticking with the same agency because agencies, some do things better than others. Some can't, one agency cannot offer you the best contract all the time. So I like to swap agencies. And if I opened up a retirement account with every agency, I could definitely do that. And if I didn't have other options, I would, because I am big on investing, um, especially for retirement. Um, but just know that if you swap agencies and you open another retirement and then another retirement, before long you might have seven or eight different retirement accounts, and which is fine. You just might not be diversified appropriately for yourself. Um, and you could always roll those into an IRA, which brings me to your next option. I have a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA um, that I mainly contribute into, uh, plus my own brokerage account. Um, but I definitely recommend maxing out your IRAs first, which is $6,000 a, uh, a year for year 2020, and I believe 2021 as well. Um, also, I'll add in a little side note. Uh, Roth is typically most beneficial for um, for travel nurses who definitely the ones who are receiving stipends um, the stipends lower our tax rate so it's better to pay taxes now versus in retirement because we all know we're gonna retire with millions because we are nurses and especially travel nurses um, it's definitely a goal I was being a little sarcastic then but it's definitely uh, doable uh, start investing today and um, you can definitely retire with a substantial amount of wealth. So, uh, do you keep liability insurance? Um, uh, I actually do not. Um, I probably should. I recommend it to a lot of people. Um, I know NSO is a company that a lot of people use. It's very affordable. There's really no reason not to have it. So maybe I will do that today um, since uh, I'm kind of admitting I don't have it. But um, I think you can pretty much get like a year round coverage for a million or two dollars for like a hundred dollars a year. So it's, it's really pretty inexpensive. That's less than ten dollars a month. So I would probably recommend getting it for any traveler. Uh, because if, let's say, in the unfortunate event something does happen, um, you're kind of an agency, are they going to say, hey, we got your back, or is the hospital, like, I feel like they're going to kind of, you're stuck in the middle, and they're both going to say, oh, nope, uh -uh. They're, they're not part of us. So um, I would probably recommend liability insurance. I don't know what's up with my computer. It's only showing me a few of the comments here. So 
let's see. Uh, thank you for this. Your time is appreciated. I uh, definitely appreciate the encouragement. I do spend a lot of time on this group, um, coming up with new posts, answering people's messages, uh, which is another thing I'll, I will mention. I do get a lot of uh, messages on Facebook. Uh, definitely would like to answer everybody, but just it's, it's, it is time consuming. So if you can or feel comfortable posting it in the group, please post it in the group. Um, or if anything, send it to me in a message and type it up in a way that it is anonymous. I will copy and paste it or maybe tweak it just a little bit to make it sound anonymous and I will post it in the group for you. Um, oh, here's a good question. Can you ask for more money after you have signed and started the contract? Um, yeah, sure, you can ask for it, but the likelihood of them giving it to you is very, very slim. Um, I, I, negotiations first step for me. I do not even fill out the agency application until I am 100% done with negotiations. Um, I can typically negotiate a contract within five to 10 messages back and forth with a recruiter and it's not, I don't do a whole lot of haggling between me and the recruiter. Uh, I, I typically try to find good contracts to start with. I message those recruiters and I try to ask for a little bit more. Once I am satisfied with it, I fill out the application, I submit, I get offered the job, I sign the contract and that's it. Um, if you find out, you know, you're making $500 less than someone else, sure, ask your agency. Even if it's after you've signed, you know, maybe they will, you know, offer to pay you more. But um, they're less inclined to because you signed the contract, you agreed to that pay. If you maybe really sounded super unhappy and said, you know what, I'm, I'm never using y'all again or I'm just going to drop this contract right now. Um, that might convince them to pay you a little bit more, but they're definitely not inclined to. I, I advise you to have all negotiations done before you even submit for the contract. I do it before I even apply with the agency. All right. Uh, can you ask for more money when extending a current contract? Absolutely. So this, this last contract, um, how to negotiate, um, how to ask for more money. Again, I'm working on something that's going to really help you. Uh, it's actually going to be a step-by-step -step process on how to find a contract, how to negotiate it. Um, so uh, be looking out for it. It should be in the next month available to all the members. Um, so this next contract is when extending a current contract. Um, yeah, absolutely. Your first extension, you should be able to get at least $500 in my opinion in a bonus or either like a dollar raise if it's a 13 week contract. And that's a minimum. The, um, Extension because the reason you're able to do that is because when you first start a new contract your agency has to pay for a drug test uh, Boarding costs such as you know, paying you for your modules possibly a physical uh, PPD PPD um, And other added costs that they don't have when you extend because at that point you're already compliant with everything I estimate these costs would be about $500 so basically what you're kind of doing is saying, hey, I'm extending, you don't have this $500 worth of expenses and I want it. A dollar a raise for a 13 week contract is uh, $468. I wouldn't tell your recruiter you're only expecting a dollar raise. I would just say, hey, am I getting a raise? If not, you know, I'd kind of phrase it in a way that I would, uh, I'm not sure, what I would say is, hey, I'm looking at my next options well, what's, what's the pay looking like if, if I extend? That way you kind of leave your options open and your recruiter knows, hey, I don't for sure have them committed yet. I better offer them a little bit more money. And that's how I like to uh, word a lot of my negotiations. I like to kind of keep it open to let the recruiter know that, hey, I have competition. He's not, you know, he's not following me no matter what. So, um, my wife just uh, wrote down a little note here. Uh, she actually just negotiated for a $100 a week raise, which is uh, kind of 
really good in my opinion. So she's actually uh, really good at negotiating. I like to tell people that I kind of uh, taught her uh, some of my ways is negotiating, but she has perfected it. So uh, anytime I'm having a hard time with a recruiter, I just, you know, hey, talk to my wife. Um, so it's definitely uh, really nice having her around uh, when it comes to negotiating. Uh, so let's see here. I don't know why this is not showing me more of the questions. Uh, I can't, I cannot see, I can only, it's only showing me four comments at a time. So I'm sorry if you commented earlier. I'm not really sure why this computer is not showing me uh, the rest of your comments. But uh, is it, if there's any other questions, I'm going to wrap this up in just a minute. So if you have questions, comment them. I'll see if I can get them answered real quick. Let's see here if I can find a couple more questions. Questions. Ah, here we go. Ah, look at here. All right. Looking to get started next month. Congratulations to all these people who are looking to get started travel nursing. Uh, like I said, travel nursing has definitely changed my life. Um, so I I hope it does the same for you. Just make sure that. You're, you're gonna be making more money, so invest the extra money. Don't increase um, your lifestyle. We call this lifestyle inflation. Invest that money, I promise you, in 20, 30, 40 years, that money will change your life. So um, look into investing. I've got some videos on that in the group, um, especially uh, investing for retirement. You don't wanna work until the day you die, so um, make sure you invest for your retirement. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I don't require health insurance. How do I know if they're still taking this from my pay and pocketing this? Um, if you're not using the health insurance, then there's not really a way to determine. A lot of times, uh, when I talk to a recruiter, my first question is, is this contract still available? What is the pay package and does it include health insurance? Um, if they say yes, then that's when I ask for more pay because I don't need the health insurance. Um, the second thing, uh, if they say no, it does not include health insurance, then I'm gonna assume they're not already taking money from uh, the pay package for health insurance. So that is one of my first, that's the three first questions I ask recruiters and I typically send them all in the same message. Um, because sometimes I think I can kind of trick the recruiters, like, does this include health insurance? I want them to be like, yes, absolutely, choose my insurance, or my, my contract, because it includes health insurance too. And that's when I kind of surprise them, well, I don't need it, so pay me another 50 to $100 more a week. Um, so that's kind of how I work that. Um, let's see here. Again, just make sure you check out in the announcement section of the group, uh, the five steps to lock down your perfect contract. There's lots of good information there. Read through it. I, it shouldn't take you too long. Um, so I definitely hope this has helped everybody. Uh, let me know if there's any questions I didn't answer. Put them in the comment section. Um, and I hope to do this, uh, to continue doing these Facebook Lives more regularly. And uh, let me know what topics you would like covered next. So. Thank you guys and we'll see y'all soon.